are all about education and and you do that that's a big part of what you guys do you just don't bring a client in and it's not just a transaction mm -hmm. right it's it's more than a transaction with you guys i think it's a relationship i yeah. think i'm in the relationship business i i think mortgage lending is probably the easiest part of what i do every single day and i think it's everything else that's more challenging you know what i mean mm -hmm. and you know i think right now it's so, so important. I'm talking to a lot of new clients right now. And I mean, 60% of what I do every day is repeat, but you know, 40% I'm dealing with new clients and I'm talking to a lot of new ones. And a lot of these clients that I'm seeing are coming out of the big five. They're coming from other financial institutions. Some of them have never dealt with a mortgage broker before. And the reason they're coming to us is really for that expert advice. And I think that's what excite me, excites me. That's what gets me out of bed. That's what's really motivating right now. And, you know, right now it's the sp springtime is sometimes our busiest time of the year. Mm -hmm. I typically say, you know, from mid-March until December is our busiest time. Obviously, it ebbs and flows. Um, but we can certainly tell you there is a big, big uptick in the amount of transaction at least we're seeing on our end. So, Okay, this may seem a, a bit basic, but again, we have new listeners all the mm -hmm. time. What's, what is the difference uh, between a broker and, and somebody that you would go see in a bank? One of the, you know, uh, I, think that, I think that's great. And honestly, yeah. people still ask me every day. Right. You know, when I started 19 years ago, I think people weren't as familiar with mortgage brokers. I think that uh, consumers thought, uh, you know, really you go to a mortgage broker when you can't be approved at your bank. Now, it's we're really seeing the customers that are very savvy. They want the expert advice. You know, sometimes they want a more aggressive rate and they really want to make sure that they're getting, you know, the best setup for their situation. Sometimes it's so easy just to sign your renewal. Sometimes it's easy to deal with that bank that you're dealing with on your day to day basis. But I think the big thing is that there is more variety out there than and I think there's more differences between lenders today than there are similarities. And I said that to a client today. Mm -hmm. Even over the last four or five years, there are more differences than there are similarities. And, um, you know, the rate that one lender gives is going to be maybe very different from another lender. The product from one lender might be very different from the product with another. So I think that's what you need to remember, especially if you are, you know, looking to maybe change your setup or if you're on at renewal or if you need some advice. You know, I think it's really important right now to seek the advice of an unbiased mortgage professional because there's just so much going on. Even when we think about the economy, we think about inflation and the interest rates. You know, not everyone's still having a great time, but the clients that I'm seeing, people are getting through. And I think here in Atlanta, Canada, we're so good at paying our mortgages. And uh, I hope those of you that have a lot of equity in your home and, you know, if your mortgage uh, is becoming a bit of a struggle that you're seeking that advice because there's always a solution. There's always a way to make something happen. Yeah, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about when you're when when people are closing and they're and they're buying, people who have the existing homes have, have there's a cap system on the property tax mm -hmm. so that so that the assessment is not reflective of a big jump. Right. But when you buy a, a home, that cap doesn't apply. So that people paying a, a pretty hefty property bill mm -hmm. uh, is that a conversation that you make sure people are cognizant of that? I say it all the time, especially yeah. when people are buying a new home, and I look at the property tax bill and I'm like, oh. You're buying a home for six hundred thousand dollars, and the property taxes are two thousand dollars a year. Enjoy it while it's low, yeah. because we know that's not going to be low forever. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things that impact property taxes. Obviously, one is the assessment, and that is done in Nova Scotia by Property Valuation Services Corporation. Yeah. Yes. The other thing that's really impactful to the property taxes is the tax rate. We've talked about this before. Many municipalities have been edging up that tax rate. Because just the cost of operating these municipalities have gone up, just like the cost of, you know, our food and our fuel has gone up with inflation. So a lot of people are paying a lot more property taxes now than they were even a couple years ago. And the one thing I will mention again is, you know, those assessments, they were very, very low for a long time. So they're starting to come more up to where the market value is. Mm -hmm. But the assessments are still way below what people can sell for and way below what we're able to get an appraisal for. So some lenders will accept the assessment value as the market value and oftentimes not even need, need to do an appraisal. Mm -hmm. So we have our automatic property valuation systems, as we know, we've talked about yeah. this before. And I mean, nobody really wants to get an appraisal of their property unless they've done a bunch of work and they're curious or, you know, they need to draw a line in the sand for whatever reason. But some lenders will, will use that assessment value as the value and then waive the appraisal requirement, which is, which is awesome. I mean, it's a good place to start. And typically that's one of the first things that we look at 
when we have a client coming in to do a renewal or a refinance, I'm like, okay, what's your assessment value? The appraisal is probably going to be more, but is that going to be enough value to make things work for you? Mm-hmm. There was a, a lot of concern, and there probably still is concern, people who were, were renewing mm. uh, who had a really nice uh, interest rate five years ago and renewing now. Uh, uh, are you dealing with a lot of clients oh, we in We are situations? in the thick of things. Yeah. We are in the thick of things around renewals. Yeah. And I will say to you, still not as many purchases happening as people might think there are, mm-hmm. but a lot of people renewing and a lot of refinances. And those ones that are renewing – Oftentimes, we're either extending their amortization, changing something, doing a home equity line of credit, a combo type product. We're not just doing straight transfers often from lender to lender. We're changing the type of product and we're giving clients different advice right now. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, the advice, it's a changing. I can tell you there has been a huge, huge, huge uptick in clients taking a variable rate mortgage, specifically One of the banks in the big five has made the news here in the last couple of weeks, giving a very good rate on conventional mortgages, which include refinances with a 25-year amortization. They are giving rates at prime less 101 basis points. So right now, that's a variable rate at 6.19. While our listeners are listening right now, that's still available, but they're only running this promo until next week, Todd. Mm -hmm. But it's shifting the conversation to say variable it could make sense and it could make sense for a lot of people. And the difference between that variable at like 6.19 and where we can get a fixed rate today on a on a refinance or a conventional mortgage, the spread is not that far. And the economists are still talking that June could be realistic when we see kind of the Bank Canada do that first rate discount. I think people are on the fence whether it's going to be a hold, whether it's going to be, you know, a, a reduction in the key overnight rate. But I will still go out on my sword, like I said here a couple months ago. I think by the end of 2025, we're going to see the key overnight rate down like 200 basis points. Well, you've been a a proponent of the variable rate for ever since I've been having conversations with you. And for us, probably about 60% of our clients are in a variable. 40% are in fixed. Historically, 60% are in fixed. So I think more of our clients have taken variable like over the years because, you know, they're here with me. They are hearing us on the radio. They're seeing us on Facebook. They're getting SMS from us and emails from us. And they're more comfortable. They're more educated around the variable. Mm-hmm. The last 18 months, people have not done better yeah. than they have on the fixed. But if we look at where have things have been over the last several years, it has been less. And certainly during the pandemic, people, uh, their cost of borrowing was way, way below what it would have been as a fix. So if we're averaging it out, people are still doing good. Yep. And I really think over the next... Uh, you know, 6, 12, 18 months, we're going to see the rates less. If you've liked what you've heard and you want to learn more, feel free to visit us online at teamclinton.ca.